There are many things left to be explored in Darling in the Franks as the series riddled with mystery continues to be a powerhouse of a show in the anime community. One such thing being how it is hinted heavily through the series that the children of Squad 13 revere Papa as their deity, even going as far as to believing he single-handedly created all of them. But I'm getting ahead of myself. In most forms of religion, or at the very least the one form of it that I'm most familiar with, Catholicism, God is seen as this all-powerful and all-providing being. In Darling in the Franks, while we're incapable of knowing if Papa actually possesses any real strength, and no, I won't list his knowledge as a strength because I mean physical and not metaphorical strength there, we do still know that he is indirectly in charge of taking care of the children in the plantations. But the moment Papa stops providing for the children and they are forced to try to provide for themselves for the very first time, instead of praying to Papa like they normally would, Zoromi takes a stance on their practice by saying, why should we have to pray when we did everything ourselves. That's a question a lot of people have when jumping ship from any religion, and it really hit close to home for me. In fact, the show's subtleties on religion kick into overdrive the moment things go south for the squad, and they are, for a brief moment, left wondering, why would Papa allow them to suffer like that? Isn't he supposed to be all caring and all providing? Did he abandon them? Well, yes, and also no. In theology, a classic statement is, if God is all powerful, then he cannot be all good. And if God is all good, he cannot be all powerful. More specifically, the concept that which Darling and the Frank starts exploring in episode 16 is a thought by a Greek philosopher known as Epicurus. Quote, is God willing to prevent evil but not able to? Then he is not omnipotent. Is he able but not willing? then he is malevolent. Is he both able and willing? Then whence cometh evil? Is he neither able nor willing? Then why call him a god? This is what I believe to be the exact philosophy that is being referenced in the show as the kids come to the realization that maybe they should just try depending on themselves for a change. Maybe Papa has no use for them anymore. Or maybe they just need to grow up. Now let's move forward to another great thing to be explored in this show, and that's how it explores sexuality. While I have covered this topic before on my channel, I'll attempt to be more delicate with it this time around. Okay, hold on one second. Okay, what I'm... Wait, something's not right here. What I'm trying to say is if you're interested in watching that video, go ahead and hit that button in the top right hand corner. Also, if YouTube decides to remove that button one of these days, well, I was nice enough to leave you a link in the description below. Anyhow, last time we talked about how the relationships in the show were all heteronormative, but the show had been hinting at the curiosity of the children and their want to find other pairing solutions to pilot the Franks. That is to say that instead of a male and female pairing, what if pairings function more like modern day society? You see, in my previous video on this topic, I theorized that all it takes is love or lust to successfully pilot the Franks. And while for the most part in the show it's depicted that females had to submit to the staring of males, we later discover that that's not always the case. However, the show brings us closer to understanding the rebellious nature that is teenage sexuality. Even by today's standards, some people detest LGBTQ forms of love. However, I realize that I'm threading a thin line here, so let me get to the point. In Darling in the Franks, whether by direct orders of Papa or his own volition, Dr. Franks designed the mechs to only be capable of piloting male and female pairs. So, while it seems that he is open to the idea of experimentation amongst the children, going as far as allowing them to discover what they truly want, why is it that in the plantations, the idea of sex seems like a foreign concept, yet the sharing of resources between the plantations is called kissing? If you have a theory as to why sex seems non-existent in Darling in the Franks, be sure to leave me a comment below. I'll be actively responding to comments specifically on that subject. But let's stay on topic for now. A prime example of the point I'm trying to reach is Mitsuru's rejection of not only his previous partner Ikuno, but his current babe crazed partner Kokoro. Now while I'd be so down to make babies all day with Kokoro, somebody's gotta tell her at some point that Mitsuru's gay. Seriously, the show gives us enough evidence to support this. I'm not saying that I'm 100% accurate with my findings, but Mitsuru definitely does more than idolize Hiro. He's actually in love with him. 
or at least he was. I think it'd be more accurate to say that Mitsuru is bisexual and just loves anyone that's willing to ride with him. I totally didn't debunk myself in the middle of writing this and needed a save. <laughs> Anyhow, while following Kokoro's character arc specifically in the show, we find out that she wants to make a baby. We also soon find out that this is forbidding by the almighty deity, Papa. And the show's brief explanation of the reason behind this is that if humans fall back to the primitive nature of wanting to have babies, everyone would have to conform to one gender. Basically, it seems that Papa encourages the exploration of human sexuality and doesn't encourage limitations of preference. Now, I know you're probably sitting there thinking, so if it isn't Papa that's limiting the children with male and female only pairings in the Franks, surely it must mean that Dr. Franks has his own hidden agenda. And I don't believe you'd be wrong about that at all. The proof of this being that Dr. Franks was the one that designed the mechs. But the thoughts of the children piloting them are echoed through 9A's statement. He stated that gender is a pain, an annoyance that's only tolerated to operate the Franks. Heck, the show goes as far as explaining that no adults have reproductive organs and only children have them as they are necessary for piloting. Essentially, all the euphemisms were correct. And hey, if you disagree with any of my theories in this video, please let me know in the comments below. But if there's one thing I'm certain of at least, it's that Mitsuru and Kokoro are definitely making a baby. Okay, before we go, I have to tell you guys one more thing. And that's thank you so, so much for watching my content, for subscribing to the channel, just for supporting me in general. In the past month alone, we've gained 100 subscribers and now I'm so close to 500 subscribers, which was my goal for the summer. So thank you guys so, so much for making me reach this threshold. And if you're watching this in the future and I've already reached it, well, thank you too. Um, now to show my support to you guys, since you've been sharing your wonderful support to me, I'm gonna go ahead and read the best comments that I've gotten this year alone. And I hope you guys enjoy this quick snippet and uh, watch to the end for a very special surprise. Boba Store says, too thick. Look, man, you didn't have to point out the fact that I'm getting fat, okay? Luke Coolate says, thanks for the rational unbiased review. You earned a new sub. Well, thank you, Luke. You earned another video. Some Japanese text, Cloud, says, how can a girl from middle school have huge tits like those? Why are you looking at a middle school girl with huge tits? Oh, and this one has to be my favorite comment of them all by Sans the Skeleton. They say, Fuck you, you son of a bitch. By the way, you're a mother you asshole of a bitch. You know what, Sans? I love you too. Much like I love the rest of you. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you liked it, like I said, go ahead and hit that like button. If you disagree with anything I said, go ahead and type it out in the comments below. But if you guys want more content like this, just let me know. Or if you want more Waifu Wednesdays, I'm thinking about bringing it back. Just let me know in the comments who you want me to make the Waifu video on. Anyway, without further ado, I've dragged this on for way too long. I'll see you guys next time. Peace!